So welcome everybody. Um, I'm curious about who St. Philip's is. Me too. Oh, okay. <laughs> this is Jason Burns and he'll be talking to us in just a minute or two. Hi, Jason. Hi, Jason. Um, so we'll call our September meeting to order. It's great to see everybody. It seems like it's been a very, very long time. Um, I think I'm gonna jump to Jason so that he doesn't have to attend any more of this than works well for him. But um, Jason chairs the social studies department at Hopkins Academy. And he and I met over the summer to talk about a collaboration around um, the Indigenous Peoples Conversation, Indigenous Peoples Day conversation, and how students from Hopkins might do some teaching with all of us. So welcome, Jason, and thanks for taking time out um, to join us. You're welcome. <clears throat> um, I'm actually no longer department chair. I I jumped ship. Um, uh, Lindsay Robert is now department chair. <laughs> Um, but anyway, Indigenous Peoples Day, um, my students, so let me give you a little background on what we've been doing and then tell you about the project they're working on. Um, we started by looking at some creation stories from a couple of different populations, and we also looked at the Judeo-Christian story. And the reason we did that was to build some context around worldviews. Um, then we started looking at indigenous populations in the Americas. Um, and the kids are currently working on a project where they got to choose uh, an indigenous group from anywhere in the Western hemisphere. Um, some of them are choosing to do local tribes, the Nipmuc and the um, Wampanoag. Um, and they are looking at material culture, um, non-material culture, a little bit of history. Um, they're gonna be including maps of where they were and where they are or where they are no longer. Um, and ultimately they all have to, so they're all creating like a trifold poster thing. Um, and some of them will be repetitive because I wanted them to choose the group they wanted. So we might have multiple Cherokees or something, but oh well. Um, and then they all have to make a model of a traditional dwelling, uh, trying to use materials that would have been used um, to do it. So sticks or clay or whatever it is. Um, so that's what everyone's doing. And then while they're working on this, like today we were looking at documents, we were looking at Columbus's journal, we were looking at Bartolomeo de Casas, um, Thomas Morton and a couple others about uh, first contact and interaction. And a part of what we talked about is let's think back to what we learned from those creation stories about worldview, about what nature is here for us to kind of deal with. Um, and what we're ultimately ending with is we're going to do some work around the origins of Columbus Day and the origins of Indigenous Peoples Day. Um, and I have uh, at least one student, a couple students, hopefully, um, who are working on a presentation that we will do on our Indigenous Peoples Night at the library, um, where they will present kind of, here's the background on these things. Um, and they, I have a feeling they're gonna want to, but I'm not forcing them to. I think that a number of them are gonna wanna go to the school committee to try to get it changed on the school calendar, but we're not there yet. Um, so that's what we're up to. And I welcome questions. Yes. Hi, Jason, thanks for coming. Um, how, is, how is your school planning to sort of promote this event um, you know, to the community at large? Have, have you even gone there in your thinking? We have not gone that far yet. Okay. I mean, we'll certainly uh, send a flyer, or, you know, it'll be email, of course, but we'll send something home to all the families, encouraging them to come. Um, and it'll probably go on our Facebook page and the website. 
I'm not sure what else we would be able to do. Will the project be um, exhibited only in the um, library or for instance, will you be having a presentation in the school as well? Uh, the plan was to only do it at the library, um, but we could potentially do it at the school. I hadn't thought of that. Mm -hmm. The library does have that nice big meeting room space. They have a lot of good space now. Would you uh, would you be willing for this committee to put anything out about it on our website or to promote it in any way? Oh, please do. Um, we want the public as a whole to come and see the projects and listen to the presentation. I mean, the presentation is probably going to be like 15 minutes. It's not going to be a, a big, long thing. Um, so yes, no, the more people, the better. Is, uh, how many people do you envision will have their projects on display? Will everyone in the class be able to do this? Yep, everyone in the class is supposed to do this. Um, we'll see if they all do, um, which should be, let me think, math is hard. Uh, Amy, do you remember how many sophomores there are? I think there's like 42. Yeah, 40 something, 40 something projects. Yeah. I would expect high 30s. Jason, have you been in touch with Patrick Barrezo at the library, or is that something you'd like for us to do? I would love it if you could take that part. Sure. And I'd love it if we could have food goodies because okay. people come for food. Sure. Food as an organizing <laughs> principle. I think that's something that our committee would gladly take on. Yeah. Have you been um, doing this in your class for more for years? No, this is the first time we're doing it. Um, we're doing a big push in the schools to diversify our curriculum. Um, and of course, the state of Massachusetts wants us to start US one with the Constitution, because um, you're supposed to remember everything before that from third grade. Um, and basically, <laughs> we were like, no. <laughs> um, so I'm doing this unit on Native Americans, and this will be a unit from now on. Um, and then we're kind of skipping up to the revolution. But I felt this was really important. So that's why we're doing it. Good for you. In our conversation, I'll share that Jason and I had a little bit of concern that students who were stepping up and willing to present to the public might face some pushback and that he and I would be responsible for being on hand and making sure that um, any dialogue was really a positive experience for the students who were, you know, kind that, of going out on a limb. And that's partially why the presentation is, here's what people are debating, not we want to change this. Right. If they right. want to change it in the school, that's fine and I will support them and guide them through that process, but I'm not comfortable putting my students in a public situation where they're not prepared to have that kind of debate. I agree. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Very wise and very thoughtful. Yeah. Yeah, I think at this stage, certainly just raising the questions, pulling up the, the, the history of these things, you know, why do we do this? Why? Why do people want to do this other thing? Where does that come from? Just raising all of those and having that conversation, that's where we're at right now. And I think the decision about what changes to make will flow naturally out of that. And I think a part of the presentation will be some of the history we've been looking at about creation stories and perspective and yeah. um, kind of trying to build a little bit of the historical picture before we dive into well this is where columbus day comes from i mean it doesn't come from where people think it comes from of course but right nothing ever does right it's complicated and and it's worth exploring <laughs> it's it, and it's worth acknowledging that all of these things are complicated but that doesn't mean we can't learn about them and and think about them in new ways exactly yeah it's important you know i'm also thinking about um Every time I go past the sign that's in front of the old uh, library here in town, you know, they have that 
sometimes they post messages on it and stuff. I think that would be a great way to also uh, inform uh, the town that there is going to be a great school project on exhibit. Um, yep. You know, uh, uh, in, in, as, in as neutral a language as possible. Right. Um, but that might be one thing, and I'm not sure who's in charge of that, but maybe we can talk to Jane Nevin Smith about that. You know, on, on your behalf, if that's something you would. Yeah. Go for it. Whatever you want to do to promote it, go for it. Yeah. Oh, and I have a question about the presentation. Is that something that we could set up? We could get Hadley Media to set up a camera to record so that people who can't be there in person can see it later? I think there's the potential to that. I just have to clear stuff. Right. Administration. Um, yeah. But I would say it doesn't hurt to, if you want to reach out to find out if that's possible. Mm -hmm. What would be involved in? Is that 10th grade? It is 10th grade. All 10th grade? The whole 10th grade? Yeah, the whole 10th grade. But I do know a couple of them are on the do not publish list. So. Okay. So maybe instead of having the kids on the camera, maybe the camera could look around the pre the room at the presentations and um, an adult could narrate. Are actually doing the presentation part. So, yeah. so I will look into right. the logistics on my end. Yeah. Okay. Any other questions or comments for Jason? Thank you. No, thank you. This yeah, thank really you so much for doing this. You're welcome. Yeah, really excited to see uh, to see this uh, to fruition. I wish I had had some history lessons like this in school. <laughs> Don't we all? Mm -hmm. uh, all right. Well, thank you so much, and we look forward to being in touch about okay. this. Sounds good. Thank you. Thanks, Jason. Thanks so much. Great. Okay, so moving backwards, we have some uh, to approve from July and from August. So somebody will motion to approve, somebody will second the motion, and then we just got to look at them if you haven't looked at them. Um, and then when we're ready to vote, we'll vote. So if somebody would make a motion. I make a motion. We have to do July and then August that we look at the July meeting and um, and yeah, and approve the meetings. Second? Second. Okay, so um, I don't know if everyone's had a chance to look at them. I can share my screen. Yeah. Any comments, questions? Um, I'm assuming that the definition of terms thing that those got added to our web page. I think I did that, but honestly, it was so long ago. I will have right. to double check. Okay. <laughs> I will abstain since I was not at either meeting. All right, all in favor of approving these minutes? Aye. Opposed? Okay, thank you. And then the August ones, which will be very, very quick. Motion to approve August. And second? Second. Okay, and this is the one that we 
Yeah, I apologize for not being there. That's okay, we do what we need to do. I think that um, where Amy's name is under this Columbus Day Indigenous Peoples Day event, that that should actually read Jason Burns. Ah, right. That was the person at the high school who was who connected with me about this event. Right. And anything else? All in favor of approving? Approve. Opposed? Thank you. Um, so Hopkins, Ada, is there anything that you can share with us about what um, what you and your organization at Hopkins are doing or interested in doing this fall? Um, yeah, we recently had a diversity club meeting, um, which Ms. Lanham can also speak to about all of our plans for this year. And uh, it was definitely a long list, um, very, very extensive. So I'm not sure if I can remember everything, but um, there was a lot of talk about Sorry, there's noise in my house. There's a lot of talk about, um, you know, definitely community outreach about um, education um, and lots of conversations like with students and with teachers about like, um, <laughs> can we maybe be quiet? Um, um, definitely about like the way that we respond to certain things in our, in uh, it, at school and in our community. Um, there's also a lot of stuff that we were working on last year that since COVID was such a big thing, um, we weren't able to like actually finish or put out into the world. Um, and so there's like definitely a lot of stuff that we're, we're really happy to be getting back to um, lots of projects and presentations and even some like, there's this lawn sign campaign that we've been working on um, about uniting the valley and like kind of promoting diversity club and also just like diversity in general in western massachusetts um and we've been working on that design and that project for a little while now so that's exciting mm. if you want ada i can share some of the minutes from that last meeting since i took notes on what you guys were saying oh that would be wonderful thanks <laughs> Um, so as Ada said, we, we always fill our plates up probably more full than we can manage, but, um, yeah, we'll see what we can get done. Last year, we started a project that we're going to publish our first, uh, part of a series called the 101 project, kind of like intro to a, a topic. So last year they worked on, um, a presentation with audio about the internment camps in China. And so that will be released to the school and the public soon. It is complete. We just have to get a platform for release. This year, they wanted to do the next session of that project, which would be explaining uh, Black Lives Matter with kind of an informational session. Um, in, let's see, early October, we helped the school with a powder puff game to raise awareness for girls in sports. Um, and kind of supporting some issues around gender, which is what Ada was alluding to. We had done a survey back in the spring about issues of diversity and how the student body and faculty felt about them. And the biggest area of alarm was issues related to gender and sexuality, continuing to be a bit of a problem at our school with how people are talking about them and handling them. So um, Ada had alluded to potentially doing some kind of trainings, or awareness campaigns for students and faculty to um, understand issues of gender and sexuality better. Um, the lawn signs that Ada talked about, we're hoping to release in March as a campaign to unite the whole valley. So 
hopefully uh, people would want to display them all over um, as a message of unity. Uh, we've also talked about potentially trying to collaborate with other diversity clubs at other schools and see if we can do larger scale events. And that could also be part of the Unite campaign. No. Um, we do a charity dinner every year. Last year, obviously, that did not happen. This year, we're hoping to do something regarding that, whether it can be a dinner or not. But the students had identified the issue of um, the crisis in Afghanistan particularly how it relates to women and girls as being probably our target event this year for charity. Um, we spoke about having potentially a speaker in the spring. We usually try to bring a speaker in to the school to talk about an issue related to diversity. And multicultural day, you guys don't know about that. It's epic. So we had Multicultural Day a couple of years in a row that Diversity Club put on, which is a day to celebrate many different cultures and learn different things through dance, games, food, et cetera. We did it a few years in a row. And then the administration felt that we couldn't fit it in anymore because of testing and how it interfered with the testing schedule. So this oh, year we God. this year we do not probably have exams. So we're hoping that we can make an argument for having extra time freed up by the lack of exams that maybe we can bring back multicultural day because it is a big fan favorite with students it's a really big hit so um fingers crossed that we can bring that back so those are some of the big plans that we have kind of brewing right now um which is a lot on our plate so we'll see how that goes <laughs> bravo is that the um uh was that the impetus for the adult event that happened at the senior center? Because um, there were signs about uh, our kids have done this. Now we as adults should do this. And uh, I'm not sure what event you're alluding to, Mark. Which oh, it was the it was the Hadley Learns uh, event in August, where instead of having a Zoom thing on a topic, we everybody brought food and we had a big outdoor picnic with everybody. Oh yeah, I'm not sure. I think that it was, uh, came about of its own accord. Okay. Although yeah. the people in that group I know have children who attended multicultural day. So you never know. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, there's definitely some crossover and you know enough families that are involved in the school as well as in Hadley Learns that they could say, oh yeah, this is like what we do at school. And those of us who don't have kids in the school are like, cool, <laughs> that's great. Another thing is that Nancy Yaman reached out the other day and I haven't had a chance to get back to her, but this might be something the town wanted to look into. I was going to check with you guys. She wanted to know if there's any e interest in erecting a peace poll um, at Hopkins or in the town of Hadley. She's done that with a lot of other communities. So um, that is something that either we can pioneer at the school or if we want to have it in a more public place and see if the town will get on board of, with it. Um, that that might be more efficacious than just having it at the school where maybe fewer people would see it. I'm not sure. But anyway, just thought. Can you go into more what? about that? I'm not familiar with that. Yeah. Um, so from what I understand is it is a kind of symbolic marker of a peace poll that they're all over the world and they're supposed to kind of mark that space as a place of unity and peace and camaraderie and community. Um, and it's kind of like an official symbolic marker um, to unite spaces all over the globe in this kind of common effort toward diversity, unity within diversity. So how big of a space are you talking about and what kind of symbolic marker would be placed? I'm just trying to get a visual of it. Yeah, I, it doesn't take up very much space at all. I'm trying to actually see if I can pull up the website really quickly because then I can share screen and give you guys an idea of what she is talking about. One moment. It's been a while since I did this. I just Google. Oh, I can't. I can't share screen. Um, but if you go to um, worldpeace.org, they have a section about peace polls. And it's literally just like a poll um, 
that has words on it and usually in different languages with messages of peace and hope. And um, they're, like I said, they're all over the world in all different countries. So there, it's kind of like an internationally, um, you know, recognized and participating activity, I guess. Mm. But it doesn't take up much space at all. It's very, very simple. And you just may, get the pole and you plant it in the ground. And that's pretty much it. <laughs> Have a ceremony. Um, and with this, is it historically been done on school grounds or in the center of town? And what, what are you folks, what are you, what would you like to see? Um, if you're asking me, I'm not sure because Nancy is definitely the, the guru in this area, but um, you know, I think anywhere we could have it would be great. I think it's a wonderful symbol for people to see. Um, that would encourage people. And, you know, it, it school would be great, I'm sure. But I think, again, with the wider public not having access to school grounds, it, it might be ideal to have it in a more communal based space in the school. Amy, can you clarify who Nancy is, please? Um, so Nancy Yaman is a community member. Her kids went through Hopkins Academy. Um, she's also a teacher. Um, she's very active in different communities in the area. I think she was part of Hadley Le Learns at one point, maybe, or started something with that. But we've definitely had her in for Diversity Club a few times to um, give talks to the students and, and things of that nature. Yep. So she's a really great resource in the community. Um, so I have another just clarification question. You, um, I think you said that it was the school administration had stopped the cultural day um, because of testing. Um, so is it the school administration as in the superintendent or are we talking the principal of the school? Like uh, how broad or how narrow was this? So this was just within Hopkins because it was only offered at Hopkins. Um, so this was a couple of years back. Now, last year, obviously, this was not even on the table with COVID. So now we're talking about two years ago. But the concern was that we had done the program in the spring when the weather is nice because we do outdoor games. Um, but the conflict is that, and Ada can testify to this, there is a ton of testing in the spring. We have all of our state standardized tests. We have all of our AP testing. So the schedule in the spring for events is extremely limited and extremely tight due to a really intense testing schedule, basically starting, I would say in March, is that about right, April, um, Ada, and then going all the way through mid-June. Um, but in particular, April, May, June is like testing time. <laughs> so it can be tough. We had discussed some ways of getting around that, maybe trying to do it in fall. But again, we're gonna try to propose it this year. The students decided and we're hopeful that we have a new administration now. Yes, I did, Ada. <laughs> um, and uh, I started calling her by the principal's name, sorry. <laughs> so um, we have a new administration now with April Camuso and uh, we have potentially a slightly different schedule in the spring. So we'll see um, if it can be squeezed in. But it's not that the administration wasn't supportive of the event, it's that again, just timing was difficult. <laughs> I think as somebody who works in a public school, it's not just administration, but teachers feel that pressure. Teachers feel like, my goodness, my students are being tested at this time and I need to make sure that they have all the preparation they need. And so those tests just sort of take over everybody's brains. Right, and that's really why we liked Multicultural Day so much because it was a break from that and a chance for the students to really learn in a unusual and fun um, manner. It was kind of, I think it was, and Ada, you can maybe speak to this, but I think it's kind of a break, a nice break and fun, but also, you know, learning new things. Hi. Yeah, no, it was, it was so fun. It, uh, I think the last time it happened was when I was in eighth grade, which is a long time ago now. But uh, from what I remember, like, it involves lots of crafts, lots of conversations, lots of dancing mm -hmm. from a lot of different cultures. Um, I think just like overall, students really loved it. Um, and it's kind of a shame that it hasn't happened in recent years. Mm -hmm. 
And we actually, I said it was only Hopkins Academy, but then I remember that we do, in the past, we have brought the sixth grade up from HES to participate. So there are some students who would remember it from their middle school, um, pre-middle school experience as well. Thank you for that clarification. Well, I hope you get it back. Yeah. And and thank you so much for this report. I it it really it's a huge contribution to the work of this group to hear what's going on at Hopkins. And it's as an old community member, it's very exciting to hear how passionate and involved the young community members are. Yeah, very much. All right. So next on our agenda is old business, um, the Columbus Indigenous Peoples Day. So you heard from Jason Burns earlier about the presentation and I don't think he mentioned it, but the date that he has uh, offered for that is November 10th. And Jason Barrizzo at the library is really eager to host. So uh, our task would be, and I'll, I'll, I've been in touch with Jason, so I'll take care of that. But uh, I guess our task then would be to do some publicity for this and to create some delicious treats. Um, yeah. Anything else, Sarah, you, you've been working on this as well. Anything else about the Columbus Indigenous Peoples? Mm, not off the top of my head. I mean, my question I already asked was about whether there could be any, any video record of any part of it for future reference, which would be nice if we can just figure out what the appropriate portion of it would be. Yeah. All right. Um, the other old business item is the survey committee. And uh, Pat, do you want me to just give you screen sharing or do you want me to share what you sent me? If you share it, that would be great, Kayla. Thank okay. you. Uh, I had it all ready. Here it is. While we're down, Mark, I can't see your face at all. And uh, I'm in a dark room. I don't know if I can get any more light. I don't think it's nice a lack of you. light, or you just can't have him on the screen, Wayne. No, I think it's a lack of light. In his, oh. I can see everybody. Yeah, he is kind face. of a dark silhouette. Yeah. Hi, Mark. Hey. <laughs> All right. And welcome, Mara. Yeah, welcome. Hi, everyone. So glad to be here. Oh, hey, Mara. Hi. So, Kayla, would do you want me to start talking about this? Yeah, great. Um, so, the document that you see before you um, was was prepared by Wayne and me in response to the good work of, of Margaret um, in reaching out to the academic departments in the five college area and uh, talking to several professors, um, one in particular, <clears throat> Dr. Court at UMass Amherst, who, who asked specifically what did our committee, um, what was the focus of our survey? And, um, Wayne asked that I do the first draft, which I did, and I, I developed it based on our mission statement. So I went back to the mission statement and pulled out all the, the concepts and, um, and then put them out there in terms of how we might um, have the overall purpose of the survey. This, and I was suggesting we call it a study and not a survey because our group has in fact interviewed people in the town of Hadley over the last year. And I would think we want, would like to incorporate their remarks about what their departments do as part of our work in, in um, you know, diversity, equity, inclusion in the town of Hadley. So um, following my initial draft, Wayne um, took a look and, and made some effort, some edits, which I incorporated and then, um, you know, at the meeting without the quorum, um, Kayla, Wayne, and I, I talked about this. So um, this is for us to discuss and edit further. 
And, um, and Margaret, especially you, since, since you were the person who took the lead in working with, with the faculty at the five colleges. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And also with the survey. I mean, you, you also, yeah. I believe, were the person who, um, right. you know, who, who started with this whole notion of, of us surveying. Right. Uh, I mean, I like what you've done um, in terms of creating it as a study um, and incorporating the mm. folks we've already heard from. By the way, as an aside, I don't know if everyone is aware that Ed O'Connor has resigned his position. Oh. I don't know anything about it. And in the meantime, the woman, I believe it's the same woman from um, who had taken his place when he was away on service leave, the woman, the former um, um, HR director in Amherst is coming back in, uh, in as, as a temporary, uh, you know, in, in a temporary form. So, um, yeah, so that, that, so, <laughs> What position I, is that, I'm not sure where we are now with HR and the towns. Um, you know what happens within town hall and 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 the and the uh, hiring policies and practices. That's our HR director, Wayne, for the town. Thank you. I, I, I will say that, um, so I, I, I guess my question would be, how do we flesh this out? And what, what, are, your, what are your thoughts about fleshing this out as a study? Um, how did you envision that? Like, is this something we would do uh, or would townspeople? Um, I guess I'm a little confused about that. So I, I guess Tom, I think I'm not going to be answering anything on this. Well, I was thinking that I think Dr. Cord asked that question, Margaret. I think he said it's very um, expensive to do a survey. If we were to do a whole survey of the town and we would have to um, think carefully of how we would get the resources to do that. I think that you mentioned that the town that you you spoke with that had conducted a survey, I think had $5,000 to work with. Mm -hmm. So I, I think resources are, are one issue. I think my, my thought was maybe as a first step, we could summarize what we already know. Gotcha, gotcha. And that makes sense. I did actually um, go online to see about funding opportunities and that was uh, not as easy as I thought. Um, and I know that Dr. Cord had said, if you're gonna involve a grad student, we should have about $5,000. So I did look to see where we could possibly get this money, but um, it, it, some of the things that are being funded is really a much, on a much larger scale where these grants are being awarded. Mm. Uh, I, from what I found, I, I wasn't sure I could see where uh, our small, um, you know, uh, our small group could, um, you know, could actually apply for a grant, which tended to be a lot larger. Mm -hmm. And and again, have the uh, the other the other obstacle was um, having the support of the council to uh, you know town um, select board. I, I don't see any harm in us applying for funds for this. It and may no, be I, I, that I agree, but it was some of these things were so so huge. Wayne is what I'm trying to say that, yeah. um, and 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 the requirements that they had to have, we we don't even have. I mean, as a town, they being the uh, these funding people, you know, who who award grants expect a certain level of organization. And who would those, who would we apply to for funds? I don't have the list right now, but the sort of research I did on it um, involved 
larger organizations that were awarding maybe $50,000 grants or, you know, I mean, these were larger, um, larger than what we have in place right now. Um, it, it seemed like a, a step that we're not anywhere near prepared to take. Right. Um, are there agencies in government that, um, that are likely to, to look upon this favorably, something of this size? I couldn't find it, Wayne. I wonder if like Mass Cultural Council would support that. I know that they have grants. I just don't know what their categories are. Wayne, in your work on the Hadley Cultural Council, most of those grants were involved in projects that were art, arts related, right? Arts and humanities related. Correct. I guess what I would say as a as a first effort, um, this study in terms of putting together what what we know mm -hmm. is a good first step. Mm -hmm. And that would be number three. I, as I see it, it would be number three, right? Start with number three, mm -hmm. go through what we know from our conversations with town officials and, and just start there and, and put some summaries in place, like a, just to get off the dime as a first step. And we don't really need money for that. We just need to go back to our minutes and, mm -hmm. and um, you know, may ha maybe have conversation by, by agency or department, like here's what we were told. I mean, that would be my suggestion because it gives us some traction, I guess. And we and it would be good to really have a, you know, a record of those conversations in one place is my, my thought. Yeah. And then, you know, doing that, we might notice, oh, we've talked to these people, but we didn't get around to talking to this and this and that, and we should set those up. Yes, I agree. <clears throat> and I think be, that's a great place to start. Would there be value also in forwarding this, this piece that you guys have written so well to Dr. Court and saying, here's where we're at now. What do you see the next step forward being? Hmm. He Can't may hurt. say, I can point you in the right direction. It can't hurt. I support that idea. Margaret, what do you think? You're the one who, who met with him, correct? Uh, yeah, Kayla, uh, Kayla, were you? Are I you? was there, you you uh, took the lead on it. Oh, sorry, so okay. Yeah, yeah, no, I'm just trying to, you know, cause it feels like it was such a long time ago. Um, yeah, I mean, I Kayla, correct me if I'm wrong, but, Uh, yeah, I mean, I'm happy, we're, you know, ha it seemed as if maybe he wanted a more developed piece. Um, yes, that's what it sounded like you were saying, Margaret, when you reported on it. Mm -hmm. Kayla, your thoughts on that? Well, I think Pat and Wayne developed some some more specifics here, and we have sort of a, net, a response for him. And mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I don't see why not go back to him and say, okay, you know, we, we, we looked a little further into what we're looking for. What do you think is next? Because he just he has so much more experience in this than mm -hmm. certainly I do, and I don't know about others on our committee. But um, do you think, Kayla, um, that we should have something already, like flesh out number three, for instance, uh, before we submit to him? I mean, what's what's the group's feeling on this? I don't. I like I'd like to get his thoughts about if we're going in the right direction, or he may say, yeah, this, you're, you're not even scratching the surface here. Or he may say, yeah, you could take on maybe a couple of these things. I think starting with number three as a question um, is a good place to start because it's going to yield information about where we might want to go 
from there. Well, that's some of the information we already have, right? I mean, that we got from Annie McKenzie, we got it from um, our police chief. police chief. We got it from Ed. Well, could we do both at the same time? Well, I'm happy to submit this to him. If that's, I, I think that's the sense I'm getting from the committee is just submit this mm -hmm. document to him. And as Kayla said, just ask if we, if he feels like this is uh, the right direction. Um, does anyone else have any thoughts that they want to add to this? Um, or do you just want me to go ahead and send it? Because I can send that out, you know, tomorrow. Sure. Can you refresh my memory who Dr. Court is? Dr. Court works at uh, UMass, and he was the only person who responded to the number of emails I sent to everyone um, who works at the different, you know, local colleges. Um, okay. So he's the associate what? dean for diversity, equity, and inclusion, associate professor of sociology. Oh, okay. At UMass Amherst in the College of Social and Behavioral Sciences. Thank you, Pat. And he really seemed, you know, when we approached him, right away he got like who we are and what we're interested in doing, and he seemed really interested and and supportive. I would appreciate if somebody could point me to the answers that were referred to a while ago that we've already gotten to this. Uh, I'd be willing to try to pull them together because that's an important bit of information. I think well, I Mark think... was our excellent clerk at that time, <laughs> correct, Mark? And you and you took you took the minutes of those meetings with those I, individuals. I think I owe you minutes, right? I, I probably have them in some kind of draft form or I just haven't published yeah. them. But also we got those responses from, you know, we using Joanne's questions, we reached out to, um, you know, the senior center and true. churches and so on and got some nice responses. So those are already in the text form. And they're probably attachments to minutes. And at some point, all of those will be as PDFs in our web page when, when we have time to get those up there. I think it's important to pull pull those together. Yeah. Someplace. That's we also probably have Zoom meetings. Right, we have those. We have we have the those actual our, conversations. Yep, there are right. links to those on our website right now. Yeah, they're on the Hadley Media uh, YouTube page. All of those meetings were recorded. So one would have to search through those meetings to find and listen to and to get to the point where this was addressed. No, I mean those through. were those meetings were kind of freestanding, you know, the, the meeting with Annie McKenzie was- Oh, I see. That was basically all there was. Right. And those One way to approach this might be for us to, if anybody who would be interested just to take one of those and summarize it. Um, I, for example, would be willing to do the chief of police interview you know, look to see about the minutes, even watch the Zoom again and summarize it. You know, I, if, if people wanted to volunteer to do one, that, that would make it a more manageable yeah. task. Then I should re-look at the McKinsey uh, interview. So if you go to our, this is one way to get to it very quickly. If you go to our webpage um, under news and announcements, these links would take you to those videos. Well, the how link. about if I do the human resources director um, mm -hmm. because I'm the one who reached out to him. Wayne, if you do a uh, superintendent, 
and Pat, if you want to do the police chief, and we do those summaries. Uh, the superintendent is Annie McKinty, right? Mm -hmm. Yes. Okay. So, yeah, okay. Yeah. Okay. So, and then once we do that, then Margaret, you would go back to Dr. Court. Dr. Court. Terrific. Great. What specifically is the question I'm going to be search, uh, seeking to answer by looking at that? To summarize what she said on this issue? Yeah. Yeah, I'm hoping that, that what we just were looking at earlier on the screen share, that that's, that text will be appended in our minutes or something or sent out in an email so that we have it to look at. This I can't even yeah. open my old minutes. This document, uh -oh. uh, this document that Pat and Wayne created. Yeah. 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 So it's number three that policies, programs, and activities that, and then the individual department have in place to promote anti-racism, diversity, equity, and inclusion. Right. Great. Okay. I think we have our our homework for that. Um, moving on to new business, I'm gonna go a little out of order because Humera is with us tonight. And uh, I, I think you have your Hadley Learns hat on. Is that the hat you're you. wearing? Yes, oh my gosh, so many hats. Um, <laughs> the, the closet is bursting with hats. Um, <laughs> thank you for uh, allowing me the opportunity to speak. Um, we're excited to hold a Hadley Learns uh, series this fall in collaboration with the Committee on Diversity, Equity and Inclusion. So thank you so much for participating alongside us. We were very inspired about uh, some of the work that's happening around Indigenous um, learning at the schools and also with this committee. And uh, we too were interested in having um, some learning as part of our uh, work on the topic and this past spring, but found the housing discrimination topic to be so big that we expanded that to cover two sessions. Um, so we pivoted real uh, quickly and, and just decided that this fall we would devote three months uh, of, of learning opportunity to that topic. And um, our team has um, uh, um, uh, donated funding to allow free access to the movie Hidden Falls. Um, and that's available to all of your community and viewership. Um, and we had a, a showing at the Senior Center this last Friday. And I have to tell you, I, I didn't have a lot of preconceived notions going in, but it was excellent. And it's just, amazing what this director was able to uncover and, and sh shed light on, which is right here in our own community. So I highly, highly recommend it. And um, not only can any of you and your community members uh, watch that video for free, it's an hour and 20 minutes long on Vimeo, but also we've invited the director to come speak to us. And that's happening on September 20th on Zoom at seven o'clock, seven to 8.30. And the information for all of this can be found at hadleylearns.com. Um, and uh, you can see some of the other events that we have going on in October. We're talking about other communities that have switched from Columbus Day to Indigenous Peoples Day. And in November, we are taking a deeper dive. And we have two excellent books available um, uh, or suggested. Uh, and if you read it, then you can come join us for the discussion or even just take in the cliff notes and come join us for the discussion. And that's in November. Um, so I just wanted to give that little bit of information and um, see if anyone had any questions. Um, by the way, the way to access that free movie is to register. Um, if you RSVP for uh, for that September, um, there's a there's a uh, Google form 
you just register and we email you the link. So I'm happy to answer any questions that you might have. I might look at it again. I watched it on the screen with everybody the other night and I loved it and went home and discovered, remembered that I do have that book, Manitou, oh. from many, many years ago. So I started reading that and I definitely want to watch it again on Vimeo if I can squeeze it in. Yeah. It's yeah. so interesting. Can you tell us really what those two books are? Really was fascinating. Uh, Tip Ted Timrek is the name of the um, producer. He won a Peabody Award uh, for his work. Um, and this film is really quite amazing. And I'll just give you a little sneak preview. Turner's Falls used to be called the Great Falls. And it was this incredible um, center for the indigenous peoples of a number of New England tribes to come together. And, and so there was this um, great um, meeting place and uh, so the indigenous peoples of our community and archeologists and anthropologists are uncovering some of the, um, some of the um, ruins that really point to the, um, the culture that was. And um, it's fascinating. It's yeah. just absolutely fascinating. Like we think we have technology and ways of knowing, but the, you just have to watch the movie. I'm not going to give it away. I'm not even doing justice, but I, I learned a lot and I yeah. highly recommend watching the movie. Yeah. So we go on to Hadley Learns, Humera, is that what we said? That's right, hadleylearns.com. Okay. Just register and then we send you a link and feel free to register for any of the other events. Yeah, great. And what two books are you planning on reading? Uh, let me just look up that information right here. Um, two, um, pretty well-known books, new to me, uh, but the books are um, I Will, How Four American Indians Put Their Lives on the Line and Changed History. So we wanted to provide sort of a modern day view into indigenous people's affairs uh, nationwide. And that was the book we selected. And the other is Braiding Sweetgrass, Indigenous Wisdom, Scientific Knowledge, and the Teaching of Plants. And, and that, if you look on Goodreads or Amazon at that book, it has thousands of um, reviews and it's almost five-star rated. And um, uh, Tony Lynn Morelli, who works at UMass in ecology and environmental affairs, says that this is very widely known in the environmental world. And so for that reason, it's, um, it's just getting a lot of a lot of traction, and I, I intend to read both. Uh, I'm going to try to at least. We'll see, but um, I, I highly recommend you check those out and come join us. Great, great. I, I wonder if you know this book. I um, don't. Uh, we picked it up, and when we were at a family affair in uh, in New Mexico, and I've just started it. Uh, it's a very thorough deep dive into the history of uh, indigenous peoples in the United States. Are you enjoying it so far? Uh, it's overwhelmingly good, yes. <laughs> oh, great. All right, <laughs> I'll check it out. Terrific. Well, thank you so much. I appreciate the floor to share this information. Thank you. Thank and you. Thanks for being here, Ymira. Yeah, thanks. Yeah. For, and for, for your the work. work that you do. Yeah. Awesome. You're welcome. Right. Um, the other new business is that Margaret and I had the opportunity to meet with um, leadership from Sharon's Committee for Diversity, Equity, and Inclusion, and also the chair of the Wenham Human Rights Committee. Um, and we were just going to share a few of the things that came up in those meetings. Um, so I can start from my notes, Margaret, and then if you want to jump in. Um, starting with Kiana Pierre-Louis and Bill Condrath from Sharon. Um, they sort of function as an umbrella organization for a lot of different groups in their community. Um, they uh, have a budget and 
one of the things they do is they bring in um, guest organizations to provide training to different groups in the community. Um, and they give quarterly updates to their select board. So um, their, their mission is really to bring the voice of the community into advisory conversations with the select board. Anything you want to add to that, Mark, from that meeting? Not particularly. Um, I don't think so, Kayla. I'm just going over my own notes. And then our other meeting was with the chair of the Wenham Human Rights Committee. And it was interesting because Wenham, of all the towns we've spoken to, they're the only ones that are sort of like us in size and also in, in um, the overwhelming whiteness of the community. Um, but they've done, they've done quite a number of small scale but interesting events. They did a pride flag raising. They did a Juneteenth flag raising. And one thing that I thought was really exciting is that they supported but didn't take the leadership. Uh, high school students took the leadership in going to the town with a proposal for indigenous land acknowledgement. Mm. So now in their community, their gatherings begin with an acknowledgement of the indigenous peoples who were the original inhabitants of the places where they live and do their business and, and work and learn and play. Um, they also worked on town policies such as the language on public town restrooms. Um, talked about how to, how they might take a lead in addressing community concerns on what, you know, critical race theory and how that's become sort of a hot button topic. Um, they are hoping to put out a human rights calendar for their community. Um, One of the other things I thought was pretty interesting about that too, Kayla, was that they had a portal um, for employers, employees rather, and visitors, et cetera, to report confidential um, information or things that they were concerned about. And she went on to give sort of a lengthy uh, example of, um, of a woman in town who had, who had bought a house and was being constantly harassed by the, um, her neighbor. Uh, I mean, really kind of derogatory comments about her ability to afford the house and, you know, could she pay her taxes? A really invasive kind of questioning. And, and the police chief, and the head of this particular human rights um, group in Wentham went to this woman's house on a Sunday. And the woman really felt very um, supported by that because here it was, people took time out on their own weekend to come and tell her that they were not gonna be tolerating this. And, um, you know, the upshot was the woman did give feedback several months later and the guy did stop harassing her. And, mm -hmm. uh, you know, so, so the, the idea of having this, um, this ability to report on, on uh, offensive behavior um, is something, of course, we don't have. But you also have to be careful, I think, in terms of having an attorney, you know, we have to know what our own sort of uh, legal um, boundaries are in something like this. We've never talked about what would we do if somebody actually came to us and and talked about something they were experiencing. We've never kind of explored. Yeah. Yeah. Now what? Right. I think that certainly um, helps when you have the police chief on board mm -hmm. to uh, come with you to these very difficult conversations otherwise. I, I questioned whether it was appropriate to have the police chief on the committee. 
versus having the police chief as as having having a positive relationship with the police chief so that you could go and you could be in communication but you know i wonder i wonder what it would mean to actually have them on the committee i'm not i'm not sure that would be entirely positive yeah, I think that might be it. Might be more than he's w ready to add to his calendar, <laughs> but having a positive relationship means that we could think about having that kind of response if it was necessary. I mean, in this particular situation, the police chief had on his business card, you know, uh, I don't know, like call him on human rights issues. You know, I mean, he was really both right. firmly planted in the um, mission of right. uh, their human rights. Uh, I mean, they didn't call it DEI. They, they didn't yeah. call it human mm -hmm. rights. Yeah. But I agree with you, Kayla. I mean, it was something we did talk about mm -hmm. in terms of how do we remain objective and maybe critical if we need to be, Right. Um, if, if these very same people are also on, on, on board. So those were the, the interesting meetings and sort of thought provoking. Um, we have open agenda. Anything else that people wanted to add to this evening's discussion? Well, I might say thank you for you know not giving up on me and I'm, I'm happy to be back. I think it's June was the last time that I saw you all yeah, um, yeah. and so I've, I've missed a couple months um and maybe you already know about this but um if anyone's interested there's a there's an email you can reach out to i've reached out to at the springfield diocese uh if you want to help um with the afghan evacuees that will be coming to our our county uh, whether you can give them housing or uh, I've signed up to be in what they call a circle of care, um, where you can support them, you can give them rides, you can uh, ad advise them on uh, job searching and interviews and things like that. Uh, Thanks for mentioning that, Mark. Yes, yeah. I've seen that in the paper as well. It's an important, uh, an important issue right now. Yeah. I'm wondering if uh, Ada and Amy can think of anything that we can do to support uh, their their uh, work at the at the schools, and uh, hope they would feel free to talk with us about what they're doing and to uh, engage us in ways that might help. Ada, you want to give that a shot first. Um, well, my house is pretty loud right now, so I'm not sure if that would be the best choice, but, um, I think like just in general, once we get things trying to things going for outreach into the community, um, like the town as a whole or the Valley as a whole, I think like the more, um, the more outreach we can have, the better. And so I think once, once we actually get that ball rolling, um, like um, reaching out to you guys and that support would really be appreciated. Please feel free to let us know what we can do uh, in a timely way so we can support you and. Yeah. I want to second what Ada said and, and thinking about having the community partnership and the support is really important because I, I think that right now public schooling is under a lot of scrutiny for these issues. So having um, support within the community, so it's not all coming from the school would be really helpful in um, supporting and, and sheltering our students from some possible negativity regarding their, their actions or their, their drives or the things they're trying to get done. It would be really helpful to have the uh, members of the outside community supporting them in that. Mm -hmm. By the way, Ada, we can't hear the noise in your house, so <laughs> it's a distraction to you. But I've got, us. yeah, I've got real nice headphones, I guess. Good. 
I personally, I'm just thoroughly inspired by what you're doing at Hopkins and yep. it's exciting. Yep. Both and it's you. great to have you part of this, this committee. It's, it's really important and, um, yeah. and really inspirational as other people have said. So we're so happy to see your faces and hear what's going on. And, you know, it, it's just great. The future is bright when, yes. when, you know, we hear Ada speak and you too, Amy. <laughs> One, no one thing that um, one thing that might interest you guys, I'm, I'm sorry, this is not super bright, but we had a, one of our speakers from Diversity Club from a few years ago, Basilius Zeno, um, who is an instructor at Amherst College. He is a Syrian refugee. He has been in this country for eight years with his wife and now child. They have a young child. Um, he recently wrote an article for the Washington Post um, because his asylum claim after eight years was denied. Um, so as sad as that is, and as hopeful as we are for a better outcome for him and his family, check out his article in the Washington Post. He's a really important member of our community. Um, and then having him as a speaker at our school about the Syrian refugee crisis was really invaluable at that time. Um, and, you know, the students, it inspired a lot of conversations among the students. So kind of, uh, tapping into some of those people in our community and, supporting them is an important goal as well. We hope for the best would, for Basilius. Would you spell his name, please? Uh, here we go. Yes, his first name is B-A-S-I-L-I-U-S. -I -I and his last name is very simple, Z-E-N-O, Zeno. He's a great guy. And was Thank a very you. good speaker for us. Yeah, I mean, I'm sure, you know, he's got lawyers working on it. So we'll see. But fingers crossed. Okay, well, anything else in our final one minute? Marg. Yeah, can I just ask um, Pat and Wayne um, if you can do your research and get back to, uh, you know, whatever summary you want to write and maybe get back to me, I don't know, say by Friday or Saturday and have it done, then I can. Uh, send that all out to Professor Court so that if there's a need for us to have a back and forth with Professor Court, we can do that before our next meeting. How about Monday? Because I have company this week. Sure, Monday is fine. Yeah. Thank you. So according to the calendar, our next meeting date would be Monday, October 4th. And uh, I'll send out info to everybody about that in advance. It's been great seeing you all again. Yeah. Glad to have visitors. And uh, yeah. yeah, thank you, Brendan. Brendan, good luck to you in your in your studies at the university. Thank you so much. Yeah, Back anytime. People, yeah, I know people do it that uh, that did that uh, regional planning and are still in the area. Yeah, that might, that might be me too. We'll find you out. We've yeah. met them by now. <laughs> Come back right. anytime. Thank you very much. Bye-bye, everybody. Thank you. Bye. Thank, you. Thank you. Bye. Good meeting.